Hello, my name is Bruno Luasi. I'm the CEO of iTech Software, and I would like to invite you for the PDF Days in Germany in June of this year. The PDF Days consist of an educational day and a solutions day. During the solutions day, iText will bring you a series of talks about technical issues such as iText for archiving and accessibility, PDF and testing, so you have an application that produces plenty of PDFs, how do we test these PDFs? But we've also invited four of our customers. In the first session, templates for PDF, two customers are going to explain why iText is the best solution for their customer. How are they creating PDFs in batch? In the second topic with customers, we'll discuss PDF and workflow. We'll end the day with a look forward. What will ITEX bring in the future? And we'll highlight one of the things on our technical roadmap regarding text and stru structure recognition in PDF. But let's return to the educational day where different people from the industry will cover topics that are related to PDF. Mark Stevens and I, Mark Stevens from IDR Solutions, we will cover a topic, seven cases for the PDF detectives. Now, let's find out where we found the inspiration for this talk. Well, you, if you look on Stack Overflow, you see that many people struggle with PDFs. For instance, there are PDFs that show blank pages that shouldn't be blank. There are There's text going missing when a form is filled out, or acro fields remain empty. But in this short teaser, I'm going to show you some of the problems that can occur when you extract text from a PDF. Let's take a look at example. Example one is a very simple PDF with a message, facsimile message, and then a number of X's and some extra information. With this code, we are going to read example one and we are going to extract the text into a file called result.txt. Let's run this application and we'll look at result.txt. Here it is. And we're a little bit surprised because where it says facsimile message, nothing is written. iText didn't recognize anything. And we have here XXX. Okay, this has been, this has been uh, recognized by iText, but all the other text has. What is wrong? What, what has gone wrong? Well, we already get a hint of the problem when we try to copy paste data from uh, Adobe Acrobat in this case. So we took this aisle message and we tried to paste this, but yeah, there was nothing that made sense in our result. What is wrong with this file? This file? Well, let's inspect this PDF. Okay, we have page one. We have the contents, the content stream. This is the content stream of this file. This is where it says facsimile message, but well, we can't read this because the strings are in hexadecimal format. Now, every character here in this hexadecimal format corresponds with a glyph on a page. So you have the character on one hand, and then you have the visualization of the character. This is called a glyph. And this glyph, well, to find what this glyph, to find out what this glyph looks like, we have to look at the font. And here we see a font. This is the font that has been used for uh, the facsimile message text. And we can see if we drill down to the font, we have a font descriptor, and somewhere we will find the syntax of the font file. Okay. So this is the font file, and here is where a PDF viewer finds the syntax. Okay, it's not for human consumption, this font file, but this is how, for instance, Acrobat knows that the first character uh, that is drawn in this message, facsimile, well, the F, how the F is drawn is explained in this font file. Now, what is the problem? We don't know. We, for instance, you could have the number, the character one, 
corresponding with F, character 2 corresponding with A, and so this would also be a 2, and then character 3 with uh, C, but this isn't meaningful, this, this 1, 2, 3 uh, characters, these aren't meaning, meaningful for users, for end users. It's uh, just a way, it's just an address for, to find a character in a font file. What we need to know what this character really is, so the, the human readable version of this character, to know this we need another mapping. We need a mapping that is known as the two Unicode mapping. And here you see a very simple two Unicode map. This is the two Unicode map for the font that was used for the X's. So these X's here, they have an address that corresponds with a glyph, but in the two Unicode table, it also says, well, this character corresponds with what humans recognize as the letter X. So what is the problem with this first file? There is no to Unicode table. How to fix this? Well, adding it to Unicode table is very difficult after the fact because you don't know which mapping was used between the characters and the glyphs. Let's try an example where uh, this mapping was already added and was correct. Let's, let's, let's first look at uh, example two. Here we have uh, some text and then we have in bold un long dimanche de fiancaille and then something in uh, Bosnian and then something in Russian and something in Greek. Let's, let's, before, we, before we extract the text, let's look inside. So we have here this page one, we have the contents and we see font Arial Bold with encoding identity age. Well, this is plain text, this is human readable, but when we, and this is in font one, F1, but when we look at the other text, we see that it's, that it uses F2 and here it says un long dimanche de fiancaille, but it's no longer human readable. This is how un long dimanche de fiancaille is stored inside the PDF. This is the PDF syntax. Then we have uh, again some stuff that we can read. We have again font two and we see some strange text here too. And then this is the Russian text and this is the Greek text. And if we look along, we see that this Q here, this corresponds with the N. Un long dimanche de fiance. Fian. Here you see the letter N again. Now, these characters, these are two byte characters, by the way. These characters correspond with uh, some value inside the font. So if we would drill down in the descendant fonts, we would find a font program, but there's a two Unicode uh, table that explains which character corresponds with which human readable character. This is why, because this to Unicode uh, table is there, this is why when we use iText to extract the text, we will get a result where we have un long dimanche de fiancaille and no longer this uh, stuff that we can't, can't read. We will have the, this uh, no man's land title in Bosnian we will have you I love in Russian and we will have rights in uh, Greek. So this is, this explains when I or when any text extractor can extract text correctly and why some PDFs, uh, why, why you can't extract text from some PDFs. Well, that's not uh, an error in your, in your tools. It's a problem of the original uh, document that doesn't have all the means that you need or resource you need uh, create a, a, a clear text. Now let's take a look at this example. This example contains sensitive information. It's a good faith estimate with some values. So uh, these are dollars, I believe, $320 and so on. And um, 
if we look inside, if we inspect the PDF, let's take a look. We can see contents stream. Okay. And now let's make this a little bit bigger and uh, let's scroll down. Okay. Uh, here we see good faith estimate, good faith estimate, charges that, and so on. And if we scroll even more down, we will probably see some values. Um, yes, here we see some values. See, 107 is a value that is somewhere on our example. 107, yeah, 107. And so this is an example where the characters that were used are human readable. Now, let's take a closer look what happens when we extract the text. Press S. Okay, terminate it. Dude, Kate, estimate, and so on. So instead of good faith, it says dude Kate. Numbers, well, let's let's take a look at these numbers and compare them. So we have pumpkin. Well, M is probably zero and K is probably a dot. But what has happened here? Why is this text so uh, changed? Well, this PDF contains sensitive information and it was created with a PDF creator that added a to Unicode table that was completely wrong. So the to Unicode table said that the G from good was, was to be mapped to a D. So the F is to be mapped to a C. The K, the, the zero is to be mapped to an M. The dot is to be mapped to a K. This tool that created this PDF and uh, intentionally obfuscated data because this is sensitive data. It can be crawled by Google, can be examined, and the person creating this uh, document he wanted to avoid this, so he added a two unique cable, a two Unicode table that is really misleading. So we received this file from a customer saying, "Hey, iText doesn't work because when I extract this text." Uh, you only see garbage. But in reality, this PDF was created in a way that uh, prevented text extraction. And if we want to fix this, well, we could fix this by replacing the Unicode table with a uni two Unicode table that uh, actually makes sense. And we could do so because when we inspected the PDF, we've seen that the text was there in a uh, human readable form. So this is a small preview of what you can expect, which type of problems you can expect that we will explain in the seven cases for the PDF detectives. So uh, let me invite you once again. Let's go to the, the uh, iText site. If you scroll down, you find the agenda of the PDF days and you'll see that uh, Mark and I, well, Mark isn't mentioned, but he will be there. He will be there. Uh, we are scheduled for uh, right after lunch. It will be a very entertaining talk, I can assure you, uh, where we'll present seven or more cases for the PDF detectives. See you.